Today we're going to have a quick look at the new list slicer visual in Power BI. We're going to look at some of the ways that you can use it, how it compares to the old slicer, and some challenges that I face when using this new visual. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's jump in. The new list slicer came out as a preview feature as part of the October 2024 updates. If you want to start using it, you want to make sure that you are on the October 2024 or later version of Power BI Desktop and that the feature is enabled by going to the preview features and taking list slicer visual. Once you restart Power BI Desktop, you should now be able to see it as an option in the suggestions tab here on the build section. This new visual basically allows you to customize your list slicers in a hierarchy. The original slicer visual practically works the same way, which allows hierarchy as well. But the main difference is the amount of customizations that the new slicer offers. Let's start by looking at the list slicer by itself and analyzing some of its properties. So let's bring in the list slicer visual here and let's populate it with some data that we have in our data model. So we're gonna add just two layers here, one which is the category and the product name. You'll see that the list slicer will give you the lists that you are able to collapse or expand to, similar to how the original slicer works. We have some radio buttons here to be able to select the multiple categories. Holding the control button here allows you to multi-select, which is counterintuitive to a radio button and how it works. So if you want to make sure that it only works to only be selecting one selection at a time, just need to make sure you go to slicer settings and do four selection. This will just make sure that you are only able to select one at a time. You can adjust the shape of the different buttons here in the slicer by choosing round and rectangle or snipped, which is fairly familiar if you work already with the new button visual. You can choose the layout of this slicer lists by adjusting it here on the layout. So by default, it actually expands with the visual. And the only way to control the number of elements shown is by changing it here which uh, will increase or decrease the number of uh, values selected here. You can also remove this fixed number of values shown, which will try to fit everything to the size of the visual that you have in that page. You can also adjust the overflow, which is basically how it treats any buttons that don't show up yet. So either is a continuous scroll like you would expect or use pagination, which is which allows you to go to, you know, switch in between pages. You can adjust the callout values here, which now you can turn on or off. But uh, the key thing to see here is that you're able to now adjust the callout values and what their properties are based on the button states, which you previously couldn't do before. So from here, you can see that you're able to change the state based on uh, if they're hovered or selected, which gives you a lot more options and control as to how your lists are being shown. This allows you to personalize your callout values even further to match your branding uh, or just, just change how your slicers uh, look and feel to kind of match your report. Same thing with the selection icon, which is the radio buttons that you can see. You can either turn that on or off you can change how that looks like uh, in terms of colors and presentation based on the states. You can change its position from left to right, which is handy if you have an expand button on the left and then the radio buttons on the right. And then you also have the expand and collapse icon, which again, you can change the values of it based on its states. You can also change it between left to right, something like this. The buttons section here allows you to adjust the different elements of the buttons itself. So the paddings, the borders and the fills. And there are lots of properties in this button section here that we can personalize. And we're going to look at those in a second. So, so far, the list slicer provides a lot more customizability than the original slicer visual. One of the gripes that I had with the original slicer visual was that there was not a lot of way for you to customize the different colors and elements of the slicer to match your report themes. But now it seems that this new list slicer will allow you to do so. One feature in this list slicer that really 
piqued my interest is under the buttons area actually which is uh, one of these uh, we'll look at the accent bar here which allows you to add a colored accent bar uh, choose its position we can make it a little bit wider so we can see it you can put it at the top left right or bottom but what's really interesting about this is that it has an option to conditionally format now having the ability to conditionally format a property is good especially in a slicer visual because it has a good potential to add an extra layer of information to your slicers however i've had some issues with this so if you go to conditionally format here and we'll change it to gradient and show and change the color based on a calculation that we have, which is, and it's basically just a measure that calculates the sales by multiplying the unit pricing quantity for every orders. And just imagine it as having, you know, different values for each of these categories. And we want to show or highlight which category has the highest amount of sales highest amount of sales, meaning the darker the color. So if we just leave it as it is actually, and we'll hit OK, you'll see that I get this error, which I'm assuming it's a bug because it's just a preview feature and I would expect this to work. So uh, when it does work, that's gonna be a pretty interesting feature to be able to use with this list slicer because it will, uh, again, allow us to get that extra insights inside our slicer. And unfortunately that applies to all the other conditionally format uh, features here. Now I might not be using it correctly. So let me know in the comment section box below if I am not. But as far as I know, when I try the same thing on another property here, uh, you'll see that I will basically get the same error. So I uh, assume this will be fixed in kind of future updates. Another way that you can customize your list slicer visuals is by adding a background image, which you probably have seen already on my first page here. So at the moment, there's no way for you to change what kind of icons you can use apart from the radio button or the uh, checkbox from the list slicer visual. Those are the default icons that you can use. However, uh, if you want to use your own custom designs, you can use the background images to do so. So this visual, for example, is created using the list slicer and using the background images, I'm able to show the non-selected buttons as deselected like this. And then as I make selections, you'll see that it gets turned on. And this is actually powered by just simply having two button images. So one which is uh, the button being toggled off and one being toggled on. And from Power BI, all you need to do is to simply change those background images and change them based on the state of those buttons. So let's try to do that ourselves, actually, if you're interested in knowing how to do that. So from the buttons part here, just make sure that the state is in default and then we'll go under background image. We'll choose toggle off. Make sure that the image fit is in fit and that transparency is at 0%. We can turn off pretty much everything else here, like the borders and the accent bars. And then as we go to the states here, we change it from default to selected, which uh, now we should be able to change the background image as well. Choose the toggle on. Again, image fit to fit. I just realized that the values uh, don't show up and that's because on the callout uh, values here, it's by default black, but when it's selected, it's white. So we just need to make sure we change that back into something like this. And you'll see that the, um, the button should now work as expected. So now if you want to clean this up a little bit more, you can you know, adjust the buttons to make it the same ratio as your actual buttons in your list, which, because uh, as you can see, it gets stretched out if it's not in the same kind of uh, size. You can also do things like hide the selection icons or maybe hide the expand collapse icon by just adding a transparency there, just so that you are only working and you can only see the lists as you expect them to be. Just be careful with this option though, because although the buttons look like they're working with these toggles and they are working, 
Uh, you can only make the selections when you select on the buttons and the expand or collapse icon still exists even though it's not visible. So there might be some confusion when you know you collect, click the uh, the toggles here and instead of selecting uh, deselecting it, it expands to the next layer. So it's probably worse to move the expand or collapse icon on the right hand side to avoid that confusion. Now, having said all of that, there are a bunch of customization features that were left out from the old slicer that is not yet available on the new list slicer, which it would have been nice to have those so that I can completely use the new type of slicers as opposed to using the original slicers. One of them is probably more of a personal preference to me, but the fact that I'm not able to change the type of expander collapse icon it's a bit of a bummer. So if you look at the original slicer and we look at the bottom here under hierarchy, you're able to change the expand or collapse icon here from the original Chevron, which actually I don't like the look of. I always change it to a carrot because I always just found it to be a little bit more intuitive than, than the, uh, the Chevron. But again, that's a personal preference. And as far as I know, with the new list slicer, there is no way for you to change the expander collapse icon apart from just using the chevron or just hiding it. So it would have been nice to have some more options or even upload or use your own icons for this uh, that would just add that bit of customizability edge to the original slicer. I also didn't see an option to change the list slicer into a drop down style, which the original slicer was able to do so fairly easily. So you simply just go under slicer settings and then under the style here, we change it into a drop down, which uh, I use very frequently just because I'm always looking to save space in my report pages. So not only this allows me to save space, this also preserves the hierarchies that I've already created. So you're able to see them and expand on them as you would expect with a slicer visual. And that's it. So those were my thoughts with the new list slicer visual. So for now, I think I'm going to stick with using the original slicer for now, just because I know exactly how it behaves. And at least at the moment, outside of the customizability, it doesn't really function that far off from the original slicer. But I'd be really interested to use and explore this feature a lot more in the future once it's a lot more developed and out of the kind of preview bubble. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.